Hey guys, welcome to 50 something questions with everybody's favorite herper. You may know him, Noah Fields, also known as NKF Herping. I'll put all of his social media tags in the description, but let's get started with some questions and get to know Noah. All right, so we're gonna fire off a few quick questions and get this rolling. So Noah, what got you into herping? Um, really, when I was a kid, my dad was always bringing home snakes that he'd caught to show me. Uh, he's also a herper, an old school guy who's been doing this since he was younger than me. And uh, other than that, really just the same thing that got everyone else into herping, watching Steve Irwin and then catching on to social media that there's actually a community of people that enjoy doing this as much as I do. Just kind of grew from there. Do you remember your first find? Ever? Uh, the first, I don't. My earliest herping memory, I guess, that I could spout off to you. I couldn't tell you what the, the first snake I ever found was. Was uh, either finding, I, I found a corn snake on a trip with my dad down to the sand hills that I remember vividly because it, it was under a piece of bark with a bunch of wasps. I pulled back the bark and there's a corn snake and then a wasp nest. I grabbed the corn snake and the wasp went flying everywhere. Would, well, would you consider that your spark animal or was it something else that like really set you no, off? The thing that really started me down the path of like targeting snakes and like looking for certain things is like I think everyone kind of had an obsession with green snakes when they first started herping and couldn't figure out how to find them. And I was the same way when I was probably like 10 or 11. I was just obsessed with finding a green snake. All right. And uh, it, it took forever. But then I finally found one and I found two in a day. And it was like... It was just like, and that set you off. Yeah, it was. It's no so, looking back. Yep, exactly. And the same thing kind of happened with eastern hog noses. I just I wanted to find one so bad and I couldn't. And then one day I, I I learned everything I could about them. I was walking the sandy edge of a field, just like everyone says to do. And yeah. there's a freaking eastern hog nose snake stretched out in front of me one day. It just blew my mind. I could see that. All right, Georgia is that the best state to herp in? Oh yeah. Okay. Don't tell other people that. <laughs> no, nah, don't. I have 400 subscribers. Nobody's watching. <laughs> uh, have you ever herped out of the country? Yes, I've been to Costa Rica one time and yeah. Mexico, I guess. Okay. If you had one week to herp any country, what's the first one that comes to mind? Quick. Australia. What's your favorite snake to find? Eastern king snakes. What's your favorite non-snake herp to find? Mm, that's a tough one. I guess. Alligator snappers are definitely up there, but just any kind of salamander, you know, salamander season is a is a big vibe around these parts, and I always get excited to go out and walk around in the rain, and just any kind of amphibians that are going to be crossing the road, it's always a great experience, so it's not really one species, but it's gotcha. more of a, a thing, an entire sect of herping that I enjoy a lot that's not just snake hunting. Who's inspired you the most in the community? Just give me like three quick names. In the community... Um, that's a tough one, dude. I right. have to think about this one for we'll a second. We'll get back to that. Steve Irwin or Jeff Corwin? Uh, the apples to oranges, hard to compare. Uh, Jeff Corwin's definitely a little bit more. If you could watch only one show for the rest of your life. Oh my God, dude. What on earth? Gun to your head. Steve Irwin. I like Jeff Corwin more, but Steve's more of a... Do you think you're a better Herper? Than Steve Irwin? Yeah. Uh, Straight up pure all, Herper. It's also apples to oranges, but I'd say probably... What are the keys to be being a good herper? Uh, make it your thing. Just focus on, just like anything else, being good at it. You just gotta, you gotta focus on that one thing you enjoy the most and just make it your life. Do you like birds? I do like birds. Would you ever just go birding? I have. Ah, oh, okay. What's your favorite mammal, locally? Uh, I'm probably gonna catch shit for this, but I like armadillos a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, flying squirrels are also cool. All the squirrels, flying squirrel, fox squirrels, I love those guys. All right, you got a 20 second limit. Which three herps in the entire world are your dream animals to find right now? That I haven't seen? Yes. Um, red belly black snake, ring calls, and uh, uh, leopard snake. All right, who's your favorite herper to herp with and why? Uh, I, I love anybody that I can get out in the field with, and it's like like finding a black race. Well, that's that's kind of a weird way to put it. I definitely love herping with people that like they they see something that's common but it's new, and they uh, they just they get they it's like a little kid in a candy shop. Even if it's like you're like that, dude. 
whenever we find something that's new for Bob, he gets super stoked about it. Well, I figured it was me, so anybody yeah, other than you. me, of course. Um, <laughs> I, obviously, a lot of the people I herp with are some of my best friends. Uh, Chad Harrison's a lot of fun. He's a, a wild card. All right, I've dude. been with Chad. He's awesome. <laughs> and uh, obviously, my guys, Stephen Fallick and uh, Graham. All right. Ben Stupavsky is also always a pleasure. Why do you think your YouTube channel is so popular? Because they're definitely not all herpers. Let's keep this as succinct as possible. Um, I just think that people like watching other people do things. And if you do things on a consistent basis, uh, the YouTube algorithm promotes it. Do you think that you were the best nature YouTuber? No. I don't know who would be, but I, I can't say with confidence on either Do way. you watch any regularly? Uh, not outside the herping community, really. What would you be doing if you only had 400 subscribers like me and needed to work to support yourself? Uh, probably delivering pizza. What's your dream job? This. Well, this is it? Yeah. What would it be if it wasn't this? Hmm. That's another tough one. I mean, I've always kind of, I guess anything in, in the herb field is kind of out of the question for this question. All right. Or are you, is that what you're, are you saying like, yeah, that's that's good enough. Like outside of herping. Yeah, like we're taking away salary and everything. Like, what would you just want? What do to I do? enjoy? Yeah, I, I really like. I'm fascinated by like, like archaeology and history. I, I love that stuff. I mean, I don't know much about it. I'm not good with it, but I, I could definitely see myself getting just as interested in that field uh, if I wasn't into snakes. All right, what's your favorite single snake you've ever found? The single individual. Um, probably this, the Alterna I found in the Alpine, Texas area back in 2017, I think. Why? Um, it was a, a snake at a, my favorite locality for Alterna, and I put God knows how many nights into looking for it. And uh, my mom and my little brother came out to visit me in West Texas that summer, and they were with me that night, the first night in the field, like that they'd spent out in West Texas. And it was just going to be a casual night of rock cut hunting, and I just I didn't really have very high expectations. I'd hit that same cut like four times that week and not seen anything. And then just it came out of nowhere. It was one of those times where you're walking back and forth and back and forth and then it just pops up. It's like incredible it was an incredible looking snake to begin with, but just this incredible snake, just picture perfect, plastered to the rock cut and everyone was freaking out. It was just a great time. That's cool. Great memory. How many miles do you think you walk in a week? Take a guess. Mm. I actually know the answer to that because I play Pokemon Go, so it tracks my <laughs> kilometers. Yeah. So I, I, I routinely break the 50 kilometer uh, achievement per week. So that's that's how much you work you put work he puts into finding stuff. Everybody who's watching, uh, your favorite method of herping: flipping, road cruising, hiking. Uh, definitely between flipping and hiking habitat, um, like just like stump hunting and walking around in the woods looking for snakes in the springtime. Have you ever accidentally hit a snake? Yes, everyone has. Which, what, what was your biggest heartbreaker? That I've hit? Yes. Um, I've never really hit anything crazy, mostly like, just like when I'm not herping, you know, I'm on my way home and I'm like, oh crap, that was a snake. Yeah. You know, go back and check it. I try to deposit those guys in the museum whenever it happens. I mean. I can cut out anything incriminating. Yeah. Cruising music, yes or no? Yeah, I, I mostly when I'm by myself, I like listening to music when I have someone in the car. If you could only cruise with one band or artist forever, what would it be? Who? Tame Impala, probably. Who? Tame Impala. I don't know that. I'll look them up. If you could only live and stay in one place for the rest of your life, would it be Georgia or West Texas? Georgia. Favorite group of herps after snakes? Salamanders. What hobbies do you have outside of this, which I wouldn't really call a hobby anymore, it's your livelihood, but outside of this? I play a lot of video games. What's your favorite video game? Um, probably the Pokemon series or the Elder Scrolls series. Do you read? I do, um, less so than I'd like to. Yeah. What's your favorite herp-related book ever, do you know? Uh, Snakes and Snake Hunting. Okay. Caulfield. Hey, Noah. What up? What do you want people to get out of what you do? Um, just an appreciation for snakes and appreciation for unloved animals in general. Do you feel like you're a role model? I'd like to think so. I think you could be. <laughs> I think you are. So do you have any uh, future bigger plans than what you're doing right now? Um, I mean, I'd eventually like to start doing some work like you're doing with fundraisers for conservation. Um, just use my platform to, for, I guess, to help out 
uh, various charities and directly impact the snakes a little bit more. And what do you have? Oh, this is a little red-bellied snake that we just flipped. Cool. Nothing crazy, but awesome. always fun to see. What did you do as a kid before snakes were an everyday part of your life? Uh, I went to school, obviously, and I had a terrible time. It was not fun going to school and wanting to be out looking for snakes. But if I wasn't wanting to be out looking for snakes, uh, playing video games. Okay. Uh, I guess it depends on how young, when I was a kid. I loved playing with Legos. That was like the big thing that I was into when I was a little kid. And uh, cricket frogs everywhere. Yeah, I know. I'm trying not to step on them. <laughs> <laughs> what was your best day in the field ever? ever. Best single day. Oh, dude. And some of the days that stick out are the days in December where it's really warm and everything's just out basking, enjoying the nice winter day. Um, you know, we'll get three or four cane breaks and king snakes will be out, which is awesome seeing like over 30 snakes in winter. Uh, another day that comes to mind is probably some of my time flipping in Louisiana with Armin and those guys. They're the real deal. They've got some of the sickest flip spots you'll ever see. Well, hopefully you won't see them, but <laughs> they've got some of the sickest flip spots I've ever been to, and they turned up a lot of snakes for us. It was awesome. Good time. What's the most snakes you've ever found in a day, whether you were trying for numbers or not? There was one day we got over 50 snakes in like two hours of road cruising down in South Georgia. It was mostly cotton mouse, but we got a mud snake. And it was just like, that sticks out as the most insane amount of snakes in like the shortest time period uh, out here. I, my highest numbers day was probably in Kansas because there's just so many ring necks out yeah, there. Okay. I mean, you're flipping 10 under a rock. I mean, well over like several hundred ring necks in a day easily. What snakes and other herbs have you not found in Georgia? Uh, the only snake I'm missing is a northern pine snake that's native. I've, there's a couple of weird things that I haven't seen in the Georgia boundaries, like striped crayfish snakes. Um, Herp-wise, I've got a lot of salamanders I still need to see. Uh, a lot of the, the mountain stuff like Sherman Eye, which is a red-legged salamander. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess you got to deal with all those salamanders in the mountains. Yeah, so. crazy um, micro-endemic things. Um, I still need to see a couple turtles, too. So. Huh. Um, the Swanee alligator snapping turtle, specifically, comes to mind. Diamondback terrapins, all the sea turtles. I've still got a lot to do in Georgia. All right. What's your biggest nemesis snake? Northern pine. Easy. Northern pine. Pines in general. Yeah. What's your go-to fuel source when you're herping? Like for energy? Yeah. I don't know, dude. I'm just Dr. Pepper, man. <laughs> I'm a fueling my kidney stones one DP at a time. Is that inappropriate for you <laughs> <laughs> We're throwing it in. You have a significant other? Yes, I am dating a beautiful woman named Caitlin. And uh, we've been together for four years. Awesome. All right. So what's the weirdest thing you've ever thought about doing with herps? Like something you would not admit to <laughs> like, other like people. Like swallowing a baby turtle? Yeah. I, all right. I admitted that a little bit last night. Have, I know there's got to All herpers are weird. So. I don't know, dude. I really... <laughs> You gotta you think can't about post this. this on YouTube, but here's my honest answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you ever cool. notice that? Real talk. Do you ever dream about herps? Oh yeah. What do you dream about more? Sex, flying, or herps? Probably herps, honestly. Hey. And it's always weird stuff like I'll dream about like clouded snail suckers and snakes I've never even really thought about. <laughs> yeah. I just see them on Facebook and then like later that night I wake up like in a cold sweat thinking about <laughs> clouded snail suckers. Dude, and I know you're not kidding. Yeah, it's always random shit. It's never stuff like I think I've maybe had a dream about finding like something I actually care about once. <laughs> Alright, lightning round, you ready? You have two seconds to answer each one. Here okay. we go. We're gonna start. Rainbow or mud? Uh mud. Spotted or marbled? Spotted. Eastern or Simus? Eastern. EDB or timber? Timber. Tin or plywood? Tin. Carolina or dusky pig? Carolina. <laughs> Eastern or speckled king? Eastern. Box turtle or gopher tortoise? Box. Indigo or pine? Pine. Red or yellow? Rat. Uh, red. Horned or collared lizard? Horned. Who are your two closest herping friends? Uh, Stephen Fallick and Ben Spavsky. Last question. In one minute or less, what do you hope to be said about you at your eulogy? Um, I don't know. I mean, that's, that is a tough one. I want to be remembered as someone who spread their passion and made some cool YouTube videos and found some cool snakes. <laughs> that's, 
plain and simple. All right. Thanks, Noah.